brought into in, the early tw in his early 20s to be a rabbi in Europe, and then he was among the first ones to speak Hebrew, and in uh, 1904 he comes to be the chief rabbi of Jerusalem. The day he steps foot in the land of Israel is the 28th of ER, 1904. His family celebrates it as a family holiday every day since then, <laughs> until 1967 when it was the third day of the Six Day War. We mm -hmm. now celebrate the 28th of ER, Yom Yerushalayim, the anniversary when the Kohen Gadol of, of the new epoch mm -hmm. stepped foot in the land of Israel and mm -hmm. began his activity towards bringing about the, mm -hmm. the Shlemut, the mm -hmm. Tikkun HaKlali. Mm -hmm. And 1904, in the First World War, he was in London, and if not for him, we would not have had the Balfour Declaration. And then in 1919, he comes and he becomes invited to be the chief rabbi of Jerusalem, creates the chief rabbinate of Israel, the chief rabbi needs a house, and a wonderful Nadiv Tzadik, Harry Fisher, who also built Yeshiva University, built Rav Kook his home, mm -hmm. which they inaugurated in the spring of 1923. Mm -hmm. So please welcome to <laughs> Rav Kook's home. If you have a heart and in your heart red blood is flowing that has not been poisoned by the toxins of despair. If our hearts are covered, uncircumcised, and beauty holds no spell, that all existence whispers, away from me, away to you, I am closed, locked, forbidden. Sura meni sura, hareni lecha asura. In kol tif tzufadim, kol yofi chai, lo hadar shirat kodesh. Ach zeirem esh zara bechai oreru. Sura meni sura, hareni lecha asura. If every gentle sound and every living beauty stirs us not to a holy song, but instead awakens in us a stream of strange fire, away from me, away to you, I am closed, locked, forbidden. Sura meni sura harin lecha asura. Vedor, vedor yakum vechai. Yashir liyofi vechaim veedna blida yinak mital shemayim. And a generation will awaken and come to life and sing to beauty and to life and draw unending delight from the dew of heaven. And from the vistas of the Carmel and the valleys of the Sharon will flow the wealth of life's secrets to be heard by the ears of a people alive. Uni Eden Shira Vifi Chaim or Kodesh Yimale From the Eden of her song and the beauty of her life a holy light will fill all. Vahavaya Kula Lote Dovev Bihiri Haveni Lecha Muteret And all existence will murmur lovingly to us My beloved, I am yours, I am yours. I have life to offer. Take, please take. Tilchash li sod, avaya kula. Chanim li yesh kach, na kach. He 
was a poet. And here, this is Heder Harav. He sat here. Mm -hmm. And this was the desk. Is there, is there something to writing standing up? But just to stay awake and more than sometimes sit down. And, yeah. you know, it's more yeah. it's coat and it's hat. And, yeah. and he sat here and, and really was the leader of Israel. The British, for the British, he was like almost the prime minister. There wasn't somebody else, an official. Yeah. And he was the one connected with the British mandate and dealing with them. And he was the one who battled the Mufti of Jerusalem until his dying breath. Mm -hmm. And Einstein was here. Einstein came out of this room saying, I now, one of a few people I've met who understands the theory of relativity. <laughs> Chagall was here, Shai Agmon brought him. Chagall asked to paint him, but couldn't think of a reason why it would be of any benefit to Israel <laughs> still. <laughs> and so God came out, I now know what holiness looks like. Was it, was it Rav Koch that asked Einstein to be, or that was later, to be a prime minister? No, it was at that time. He was, oh, was, it was for the Hebrew University. The... That's how we met Rav Koch. Uh -huh. And so, um... And here is the Cheder Orchim, mm -hmm. the guest room where Sudashni Shi in the beginnings of, of the yeshiva. Mm -hmm. A rug that was woven to him, a gift from the Pitzala School of Art, our first weaving <laughs> in, in recognition of his support for the Renaissance of the, his Jewish craft and Israeli craft. Mm -hmm. And um, we will sit here and we learn every Tuesday evening, and everybody's invited to join us at the Rav Cook's table and we learn this Torah. And then there's one more room here that where um, this is the baby Midrash. Created and began here it was called the Yeshivat Mer Merkazita Olamit, the Central Universal Yeshiva, mm -hmm. and um, became known as Merkaz Rav. It began and was here until the Rav Cook passed until 1935, mm -hmm. and the Yeshiva continued here until in this room in this building until 1964 mm -hmm. and then moved to Kiryat Moshe and that's perhaps a good starting off point to 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 look a little into where, how the Rav Cook spirit yeah. passed on because mm -hmm. Rav Cook had a few students his students were as well as his son Tzvi Yehuda and his other primary student to Yehuda Zatzal was the Rav Hanazir, or Rav David Cohen. And uh, Rav David Cohen was the one that Rav Cook gave his writings to, and that he brought them out in the form of Olot Kodesh, a Rav Hanazir, who lived till 1972. And before he passed away, he gave us this book, Kol Nevoa, which is a, a compilation of, of the encyclopedia of, of the process of Kabbalah, Mm -hmm. and the unfolding message and the true inner message of Kabbalah and the whole process leading to, to Rav Kook as the final statement before we return into 
you know, uh, Mashiach time. Mm -hmm. um, but in that book, he outlines in great depth exactly what that process is about and how it's going to unfold. And um, he, he presented this book at the, at the president's house in 1970, and, and, and not enough people have learned it. But those that have learned it are, are take great um, confidence mm -hmm. that the unfolding of history, and as Rav Cook spoke about it, basing himself on the Ramchal, basing himself on ultimately the Torah, mm -hmm. is, is happening in the most extraordinary ways. And the fusion of Torah, Eretz Yisrael, and Am Yisrael, Beklari Torah, that Rav Cook writes about, has given the possibility to have this fusion of Eretz Yisrael and the Yehudim, which we're now seeing. Mm -hmm. Where is the greatest religious, spiritual vitality among the Jewish people right now in terms of that? You have to say in the world of the Kipot Slugot, in the largest thing all over Israel, in Tel Aviv, the Kipot Slugot that are in high tech, in Tel Aviv, in, in Haifa, in universities, and that, and the rabbis and the doctors, and all of them that are, you know, that are, and, th and that entire world is a creation of Merkaz Arav, mm -hmm. and also the, the very strong Eretz Yisrael, Yehud, the return to, to Hebron, and, and our, our Rav Cook wrote a letter in 1922 that he summered in Hebron and said, we should be buying here. Why, if we're buying everywhere else, why do we buy here? It's so beautiful, and the people mm -hmm. are so nice. They were at that time, before the Mufti poisoned them. Mm -hmm. And so they have an understanding of history, and they're willing to, to live for it, as well as to possibly die for it. Mm -hmm. And to suggest that this entire unfolding has nothing to do with Rav Kook is, is, is missing reality. Because let me tell you one more thing about the inside story. So the Rav Nazir, who was an extraordinary Mekubal, um, guess who his, he had one son, uh, Rav Shar Yashuv Cohen, uh, Shlita, may he live and be well, uh, Adnev Esri, who, who was one of the first people to, um, he was the chief rabbi of the Air Force in 1948. Rav, Rav Hanazir's son-in-law was Rabbi Shlomo Gorin. People heard of Rabbi Gorin? He was the chief rabbi of Tzahal, and then the chief rabbi of Israel, and mm -hmm. was also the, the, the one present when they liberated the Kotel. Who do you think they sent for in the very first jeep that got to the Kotel? The Rav Hanazir. Rav Gorin ordered that he be there, and he came there. He was continuing Rav Kook's teaching, and the impact of it is incalculable. And today, how many people are starting in over Tel Aviv? They're starting to translate Rav Kook into modern Hebrew and presenting it in ways that all the, the, the secular Jews might find of interest and, and, and so on. So Rav Kook's spirit has grown in, in, 19, in, in for Israel's 60th anniversary. They did a, um, a poll, Gesher Yediot Who's the person most influential on shaping the modern state of Israel? Number four was Herzl, number three, Lubavitch Rebbe, Reagan vote, number two, <laughs> Ben Gurion, and number one was Olaf Kuk, Zatzal. Mm -hmm. so, what, so why do you think that the, a good percentage of the Haredi world either doesn't hold by him or dismisses his, the movement or what he stood for, or yes. they say that it's, a, it's, it's over? They, 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 yes, we they we say, used to, they, they we don't that. anymore. You see, they say that. The fact that yeah. they say that doesn't mean it's, it's true. Uh, no, of course. But However, the history of yeah. it is fascinating. Yeah. It's a story that begins, when Rav Kook was alive, the entire, what comes to be known as the Haredi world, all around here, all loved him yeah. and revered him. It was a small number. And basically, historically, that small number was able, after Rav Kook passed away, and his like thing, to effectively block him, create mm -hmm. a or love, if I may use a foreskin mm -hmm. between Torah and Rav in that world, so nobody reads it. 
What, what do you think the reason they... they they're afraid of it. It's, it's, it's a new paradigm. It's protecting... They're afraid of it. It's, they, they want to keep the structures of, of, of Europe in Galut, and he's not in those structures, and he's presenting a holistic Torah, yeah. and they're afraid of it. But if, but if he's one of them, and he, and, you know, he brings... He brought solid sources, and it's, it's not like he's... But he does, so that's why they can't, speaking nonsense. So that's why they can't dismiss him. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're, they're that's, yeah. the, that's the bind they're in. Yeah. So they'll find reasons. Oh, he was too idealistic for that. But everybody will recognize that he was the gadol of you know. They, but that's also what gives us, who are his yeah. readers, who believe that he was speaking for all of us, yeah. you know, great confidence. It's yeah. also the the depths of Torah in its most extraordinary expression um, from, a, from the most extraordinary consciousness that we've been blessed to have as a, as a teacher in, in Israel um, in, in this time. It's a blessing. I don't think we'd be able to have made the switch into Eretz Israel if Rav Cook was not here to effect and create the vessels. In fact, <laughs> is sitting in this base medrash in the 1930s where many of the people that were the centers of Etzo and Lechi. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you understand the implications? Mm. This is where the, the army of Israel was created. And, and of course, and then Ben Gurion, you know, all of that together. But he, was, he made that fusion, and he also presented a vision that brought it all together in such a way that the people with the kippot would not be afraid of living in a real way with the people without the kippot, and not creating mm. the, those terrible separations that are still plaguing us. Mm. And, and and he really presents a holistic model that we all can benefit mm -hmm. from understanding. Mm -hmm.